Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kaipet Labs. Um, in today's video we're going to be discussing elements and their symbols. Okay, so so far we've introduced the concept of the atom. Okay, so coming from the Greek word atomos, which means cannot be cut or indivisible is kind of another sort of way that, that that word is translated. Just remembering that it, when we're using words like in, that, that come from Greek, that when we put the letter A in front of it, it means uh, the opposite or not. You know, so we talk about typical um, being kind of common or usual, and atypical is not common not, or unusual. Okay, so that's just just so you, you can kind of see where the language kind of comes um, comes in there. And so we propose that this, this idea that all matter, all the, the things that we can touch and that we can, um, we can taste and we can, we can see and those sorts of things that are made up of matter and that at its smallest level that matter is made up of atoms. That if we can um, take an object of matter like a piece of paper and break it down into small enough chunks that eventually we get down to a point we can't cut anymore and that point is its atoms. Okay, the small these small particles um, that make up all matter. Okay, and we've also identified that <clears throat> that different um, that we get different types of atoms, and that we refer to those as elements. Now, the concept of elements is one that, that's been around for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks thought of four elements: earth, air fire and water and that they consisted that all these were the building blocks of everything that all that, that we know was comprised of, of these and combined in some way you know that if we took um, earth and water and they combined together to make mud and, and so that that's how mud was put together and so on okay and now what we we recognize is that these days <clears throat> those concepts don't fit okay that, that you know that, that we've moved beyond that that we still use this the, this same kind of idea of what elements are and so today we're going to, we're going to unpack that a little bit further and then we're going to start to talk about the, some clue you into some of the language of chemistry okay so at its heart an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into anything simpler Okay, so anything, so so if you can take a substance and you can break it into simpler substances, and then you take those and then you see if you can break them into anything simpler, eventually you get to a point you cannot break it anymore. It's the simplest that it will go. It's the most basic building block. Okay, and that we use these basic building blocks to then construct more complicated things. Okay, just thinking about like say like Lego, that you could take a Lego set, you can take a Lego construction, you could pull all the pieces apart and then you know you'd get to these blocks that then you could use to build different things okay now the the thing with that um and so we still kind of we we still expressing our understanding of elements in that way is that each in chemistry in order to in, develop a more universal language is that we assign all the elements that we know of to a symbol so it it's um one or two letters depending on the symbol. Um, it has capital first, so capital letter first, lowercase um, second. Okay, so if it's more than one letter, then it always starts with a capital and, and the second letter is lowercase, not uppercase, not capital. Okay, but so the idea is that this is all about a universal language of chemistry. Okay, so that internationally and historically, you know, thinking about over time, that that we can be discussing exactly the same elements, the same building blocks using this kind of this code. Okay, and so the, the and also then regardless of whether we speak the same language more generally, that then we're using this same code um, so internationally that we can we can um, make sense out of what's going on. Okay, so um, that's that's kind of we, we, we're going to have a look at, at some of the examples here. Okay, so the first, the first kind of category or the first um, sort of example is where we've just got uh, one letter. Okay, so we've got one letter and it's the first letter of the name. So C, 
for carbon, O for oxygen, S for sulfur, and so on. Okay, so these are capital letters. I mean, I appreciate that with my handwriting that maybe not be that easy to tell. Okay, but so we've got a single capital letter which is you can identify as the first letter of each name. Okay. Um, Okay, the next category that we come up to is ones that have a two-letter symbol, um, but that starts with the first letter, okay? So, for example, I've got calcium, which is CA. So it starts with the, the first letter, C for calcium, and then it has a second letter um, to help distinguish it. Part of the reason for that is that uh, we already have C for carbon. So if we put C again, that's just going to make it very confusing, okay? And so we need a second letter in order to make it that symbol unique. And also it helps us to distinguish then other elements that start with C, like chlorine, which is a CL. That's a lowercase l, by the way. Um, you know, and then we've got other ones like cadmium. Now we can't do CA because we've already taken that. So we give cadmium the symbol of CD, okay? And then, and so on. So two letters, it starts with the first letter of the actual, the name of it itself, and then we give it a second letter that's unique, so that then we can distinguish, um, you know, for example, these three elements together. Okay, and so and often we would be going to the second letter, or perhaps the second, the, the letter of the second sound. For example, in chlorine, in the original Greek, that CH is actually one letter, um, it's that ch sound. Okay, and the same one like in Christmas and Christian and Christ. Okay, but L is actually the second sound, so we, we give it the L instead of CH. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now we, we also then um, come to ones that um, are one letter, or and, and also one, oh, I'm not, oh, we'll put these together, one or two letters, but they're not, they don't come from the first letter or the, the, the actual, what, they don't seem like they come from the name at all. Okay, so for example, Na, which is for sodium, um, Hg, which is for mercury, Au, which is for gold, um, Ag, which is for silver. Okay, now the reason for this is that um, <clears throat> in the past, these elements didn't have these names. They were given symbols based on their original names or kind of other names that existed. So sodium is Na because it used to be called natrum or comes from natron, a type of salt. Um, it was the salt that used, the Egyptians used to preserve mummies. Mercury used to be known as hydrogentum. Okay, as we'll see down here, that argentum is for silver. It's also where they get it, the country Argentina gets its name because it was a source of silver. Um, mercury is called hydrogentum, which relates to quick silver, okay, which was its nickname. Gold is aurum. Okay, and then we got other ones like lead um, and antimony and tin. All of the, these are other examples of elements that um, had a previous name, often in Latin, that then the symbol came from that, and then it's over some point in the, the past that then we've adopted a different name for it. Um, and, and so then the symbol has stuck, um, often because of its historical development, to kind of change it makes it a bit more complicated. Um, <clears throat> but then this way, now we can distinguish each element by a symbol. So the reason for that is that then when we start to build our building blocks, um, use them as building blocks to build more to build compounds that then we can use these symbols as a shorthand okay i'm just going to quickly illustrate what i mean okay so let's say that i was in a situation where i had the element hydrogen which has the symbol of h and i have oxygen which has the symbol of o and these were combined together in a ratio or in a proportion that i have two hydrogens and one oxygen joined together. Okay, so what I can do, you know, so if I were to kind of picture this and I said hydrogens were little black circles, and then my oxygen was a red circle, then it might look like that. 
Okay, and so then <clears throat> what I can do is that I can write a formula that kind of combines these symbols together. So I've got hydrogen and oxygen together. Sorry that my, my pen's not traveling so well. Um, but I also want to express that I've got two hydrogens for every one oxygen. So what I can do is I can pull a little number two in my formula to show that. And voila, I have a formula that hopefully should look pretty familiar to you. But so it's same, this same sort of principle I was talking about, that taking building blocks, combine in a particular way, and then now because we've got symbols, we can write the formula for this compound, which of course is water, H2O. Um, and so by using the symbols, we can represent that compound um, in a simpler way. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.